Right. So what we're going to do is here we are in the staff portal. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look for the book creator icon. It's kind of the rainbow looking one. It's very, uh, it's the exact same icon found in both student portals as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And it brings you to a sign in page. And notice because I was from the staff portal, it defaults to teacher sign in. However, if for some reason you click and this is sort of the rainbow, you do not want to sign in this way. You always want to sign in as a teacher if you are a teacher and then select sign in with Google. I'm going to select my account. And it brings me to my library that I had previously been working in. So I'm just going to click there just so you can see sort of the teacher dashboard page. So these are my libraries that I have created. And if you are wanting to create a new library, and I will go through this towards the end of the hour, you would click here or to join a library from another teacher, you would click in here. So that's what your, your students will do. And I will show from a student's perspective in a little bit, but we're gonna dive right into Book Creator. So I've created this library. And this is how, what we're going to look at tonight. So first of all, at the end of the session, everyone's gonna get a chance to copy this book and it's full of templates that you can use with your students as well as lots of videos and resources that you can take at your leisure as well as it starts with a video um, in how to get started in book creator any of the links that are associated with this book you will have to use in the play function for read the book and we'll go through that in a little bit so that is a webinar right from uh, book creator themselves. I really liked their their walkthroughs. Their John Smith did this one, and it's amazing. And this is where I learn a lot of my stuff for, about book creator is watching webinars from their YouTube uh, playlist. So that's a, a a walkthrough from their perspective. Uh, so tonight we'll be describing how you would use book creator on a Chromebook specifically or a laptop. Um, I always like to go over accessibility settings of any app that I am using. Um, I am Tara Potter. I'm a learning technologies consultant, and that is my Twitter handle. If you use Twitter, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter. That'd be great. Um, so there is an iPad app that is for Book Creator. So like I had mentioned, the things are a little bit different on an iPad as opposed to a Chromebook and a laptop. So just keep that in mind if you're only using an iPad. What I'm saying tonight only applies to Chromebooks and laptops. All right, so we talked a little bit about where to find Book Creator. So I just have some screenshots there of the different portals and where they are located, but you're always wanting to look for that rainbow book. And that's how I kind of describe it to the students and it's easy for them to find. Um, I'm going to do this at the end because I think I'd rather go into the features, but there, I'll go through at the end. There's a bunch of different stuff right in the Book Creator website and all kinds of uh, certifications and discovery tabs, that sort of thing, but I'll do that towards the end. Okay, so we are going to get started right in, and this is what I would do for students if I were introducing Book Creator for the first time and I would do this I've even done this lesson probably all the way up to grade 11 you want to kind of give basics of things and where stuff is um, in the main two menus and then you can kind of let them go and play with it and that sort of thing so what I'm going to talk about is changing backgrounds taking pictures adding shapes changing fonts and colors and then using the pen tools and if you forget any of that it, I have the video associated with that. So the reason why I made this blank is because if you do make a copy of this book this is something that you can and I'll show you how to copy an individual page uh, in a little bit. Um, you can take this and then give this to your students and then it gives them sort of spots where they can do these things. So the first thing is to change the background and then take a picture. So that in this first box, 
without anything selected, what I'm going to do is click on the inspector button. So there are two main buttons up here. The eye is the inspector. And if you want to change how something looks or something about different elements, then you can click on the inspector button. And if you want to add an element, you click on the plus. Pretty intuitive. I like that a lot. So here are some different backgrounds. So what I would have my students do is change the background. So in here, uh, you can change the backgrounds. These are some comic ones. Because I've selected a comic book, um, it kind of previews these first. Um, but then you can just pick regular colors in here. If I go back, there are different papers. So for example, like math teachers love this one, the grid one. Lots of different selections and your students can have fun with this. I always like to say you have one minute to change your background because they will play with this feature uh, for a very long time. So I, I've selected my background, that's perfect. And then what I'm gonna do, actually I'm gonna come back to the meet and turn off my camera so this works. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add. So anytime we want to add something and then we want to go to media. Which there, but that's no problem. So we're going to use the camera and we're going to allow. And there I am there. And I'm going to take a picture and you notice that I can also record a video. So for this part, I'm just going to take a picture. And, oh, look at that beautiful picture. We're gonna use that picture. It's taking a little bit of time. Oh, wow, that's large. So we're gonna shrink that down and put it in the box. So you can see right here that in order to change the shapes, um, you look for the four dots. So you have to select the object. And once it's selected, you get four dots. And that means that you can change something about this. And then it's always fun to ask the student, what do you think the green dot is for? So they always guess. Usually if they view slides, it's to tilt it around. So you could tilt it on its side, which is fun. Um, so that is taking a picture and changing the background. So that's two things that they could do. So right away, that's a, a nice two things to do. Then what we're gonna do is add the shape and change the color of a shape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on the plus and then click on shapes. And then this is actually a new feature that I was just playing for today. Usually it would just have a, a couple of shapes in here and not too many other kinds of shapes, just basically triangles and different things, stars maybe. Um, but now uh, the, in conjunction with the nouns project, they've um, increased uh, all thousands of different shapes. So what you would do is you would type into the search bar and then you could get all kinds of different shapes. So you could do it that way, or you could use one of their pre-selected shapes. So I'm gonna just choose the star and come over here. And in order to change something about the star, I need to have it selected. So if I click off, you notice that the dots go away. So I need to make sure that I'm clicking on the dots, clicking on my shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on the inspector. And the inspector is going to change something about the thing I have selected. So right here, you can see color is the first thing. And I can change the color right here. And that's a pretty simple thing to do. Um, the plus button down here lets you drag the color around if you want. And then you can apply different colors. And this is actually a new addition. If you're into hex codes, like I kind of am, each color has its own unique code. So if you have branding colors, for example, like OCSB branding colors, um, you could put, type in the hex code right there. So um, that's for kids who kind of want next level. But if you're working with little ones, you probably just maybe want to stick to this main page. So I'm just going to make it red. So those are some things that you want to do. Uh, the next one is to add text and then change the font size and color. So again, if we want to add something, we click on the plus. Then we are going to click on, so for comics, you get this middle bar and I can add in text here or there's one other spot you can find text in media. And this is more of a plain text. So I'm going to click on this one. And I'm just going to type my name. And you can see it kind of 
pops it in a, a spot where you don't really want it. So we want to make sure we're getting the directional arrows. So I scroll very slowly until I get my directional arrows and that's going to allow me to move my shape. From here, if I double click, you notice I could do a couple of sort of basic things here. I can make it bold, italicize it, underline it. I could also add a hyperlink, uh, but that's pretty what much it. Not too exciting, but don't worry. We're going to make it a little more exciting. We're going to say done, but we're going to keep it selected. And then we're going to click on the inspector button. Um, so right here, what I can do is I can change the size of my name. I can also center it. I can bold from this menu as well. And then this part is fun for students is changing the font. And I always say scroll down till you get the fun fonts. So um, it's actually labeled fun. And then I, I like to point out a few of them, like bangers is a really nice kind of comic-y one. The blocked one kind of looks like Minecraft. Um, and then again, this is something where I may need to put a time on it because um, the students will just play with this for a really long time. So that is changing the font. So if I go back, I can also change the color. So maybe I want to stick to a theme. Maybe I'm doing red. So I can change the color. Um, there are other things that you can do, but sort of as a basic walkthrough. And again, if you're playing with this, um, yourself i would i would uh implore you to click lots of the buttons and kind of see what they do and play around with these features but that's sort of the basic thing that i would get sort of really young students to do um and then this part right here is use the pens to draw a picture or write a word so pens are really fun and this makes it nice for students in that they can use a drawing feature so it doesn't always have to be a typing thing so i'm going to click on add an item, then I'm going to click on media, and then right here is pen. So I'm going to get the pen, and I for my screen tonight, I'm not actually using a touch screen. Um, so I, my drawing abilities will be limited to my mouse abilities here. So you can choose a different type of pen that you want. I'll go over the auto pen in a little bit. So we're not gonna click just on that one. So I'm gonna click on the marker. Um, you can also change the thickness of your line. So maybe that smaller one. And then up here, this part I didn't find very intuitive myself um, because it's a black dot. So it didn't think, I didn't think anyway, that this would be the part where you change the color, but this is the part where you change the color. So before you start writing, pick the color that you want to write in. And students love these magic, magic ink ones. So you can pick rainbow and then right here kind of graze it out and you can draw on top of your page and it will insert it as a separate image. So just know that. So I always tell the students to draw as big as you want. Don't worry about making it fit in the box. So draw however you want. I'm going to make it fit in the box later. So I'm going to have my rainbow happy face little guy. Oh my God, he's so cute. And then up here at the top, if I did, if I wanted to erase something, I see he kind of has a little dot right there. I could erase something. Um, I could add emojis, different stuff. I'll go through that in a little bit, but right now we're focusing on the pen. Um, and then I'm going to click on done. So I did my drawing and what you're going to see in a second, I can actually select this as an image and shrink it down. So that is an accessibility feature. You can draw things, it will insert it as an image, and then you can shrink it or make it as big as you want to make it fit into the space that you want. Uh, good. So that in itself, I would say this page probably would take a whole block for a primary <laughs> class, maybe like a grade one kindergarten maybe grade two, but they could definitely do all of this. So I've ran this lesson um, and because they like to play with the fonts and the backgrounds, that sort of thing, that's why it takes a little bit more time. Um, and then what I would usually do is have this kind of training page and then just let them add some blank pages where 
they could kind of have fun with the features. So it's important when you're starting a new tech tool with students that you let them click around and change, could be, because there's lots more buttons in there to kind of play with the buttons a little bit because it will be distracting for them. Okay, so moving along. Uh, accessibility features. So we're going to talk about some voice taping, uh, which is in 120 languages, um, some closed captions and all of that. And if you can't remember, um, again, this is an amazing walkthrough of all the accessibility features. Okay, so this is a strategy that I'd like to mention. So if you are creating a book for your students that they would make a copy of and then be able to edit, I like to, in the editing panels here, notice how I have some things on the outside. I like to give directions and put them on the outside and then I don't take up any space in the book. So all I've done is just inserted text boxes and played around with them and then uh, put the directions off to the side. If the students were a non-reader, they could definitely use their read and write and draw a picture around it. So if they were using the read and write, they could use the screenshot tool or they could press um, highlight it and do that. So that's what I would recommend for students who are non-readers. So in this first panel, um, you're going to record a one minute video about why you decided to learn to use Book Creator. Um, edit if needed. And it says to click the plus, then the media, then the camera, record and insert your video. So that's sort of a summary of the directions. So plus, I'm going to see if I did this right, and then media, and then your camera, and then you're going to record a video. So up here, remember we took a picture, now we're going to record a video. Hi everyone, I think Book Creator is great. You can also preview the video right here, press play. You could also make it bigger. You could also download it and put picture in picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that video and it's gonna pop it on my screen, probably too big. And that's fine because we're a masters at shrinking down things right now. So now I have my video in the screen. Uh, in panel two, what we're going to do is we're going to add text using the dictation tool. So this is an accessibility uh, feature uh, and you can use this in French if you're a French teacher or you can um, use it in 120 different languages if the students uh, have a, uh, a different language that they'd like to insert. So we're going to click on the plus, then click on media and then click on text. So up here, you see there's a microphone. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Question mark. So you can see it worked pretty well. Uh, it's in English as default. It did put an extra period there, I noticed. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on backspace, and then I'm going to say done. I will model for you the other language. So I'm going to double click on this. And notice how it defaults to English. So this is the only part right here is that if you start speaking and you are trying to do this, what you'll have to do is okay. Bonjour tout le monde. So it worked pretty well as well. Sorry about my French accent. I'm sure it's terrible. So what you could do is any extra text that uh, was created, just go ahead and delete it. And this is this is something I actually just forget, but I'm curious about. I want to see if it saved my preferences to French. It did. Okay. So what a student would do if they were using this for French um, is you sort of just have to erase that initial text once and then it saves your preferences uh, as your French preferences. The next thing that you'd want to do is insert an audio note stating which feature you like about Book Creator. Okay, so just some uh, um, some tidbits here 
is select your audio recording and press the I button and insert transcript if needed. Okay, so what we're going to do is, again, not a video, but we're going to do an audio and we're going to put media and now we're going to just record our voice. Book Creator does a little countdown before you start recording your audio. And it makes this kind of cool little icon and you can bring it down and insert it in the box. Again, you can make it really big. And some neat things that you can do about the audio feature here is click on the eye. Um, and then this part over here, you can click add transcript. So I'm going to go ahead and add transcript and I'm going to generate automatically. As long as I was speaking in English, it would generate it automatically. And then it does take a little bit of time to translate, uh, to get a transcript ready for it. And you can imagine that someone who has low vision would probably, or sorry, uh, who is hard of hearing would, would need to have the transcript available so they wouldn't be able to totally hear the audio feature. So that's just an accessibility feature that you can add within an accessibility feature, two accessibility features in one little sound icon. So, um, in this box, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a picture from Google and then add alt text to describe the image. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to click on um, the little picture right here because I'm going to make it fit in the box. And I'm just going to type in dog. And we're going to select a little picture of a puppy. Oh, I like this guy. And press select. And because I chose the picture down there, it does fit the panel box really nicely, which is which is kind of a different way to insert a picture. Um, so what we can do again um, is let's trash that. And now what I'm going to do is show you the other way to insert a picture is we click on media and then import. And then up here, I can do the same thing. Maybe I like this guy now. And it makes it a little big, but we can shrink that down. And now that we can have it, our picture selected, we can add some alt text in here. So what is alt text? So alt text would describe the image when it's being played to the students. So once you click on read to me, when it gets to that picture, when it sort of uh, goes from the top to the bottom, it will describe the dog. Okay, so you can be as detailed uh, dog down. And if we're happy with that, we can just click off and then it will add text when you click on the play button. Some other ideas for using Book Creator is to use it for math. So, um, just inserting a picture with some words of math problem and then you they can use the the pen tools or text tools or audio or video to solve their math problems to show their thinking in lots of different ways to level this little image up what i may do to this image first of all i have it locked so i'm just going to unlock it for a second and the reason why i have it locked is just that's all i'm doing is right clicking on the image and locking it and that means that no one can be accidentally deleted. So this is a good tip if you are creating a book for your students. So I'm going to unlock and then I'm going to add some alt. Oh, and I already did that actually in advance. And there's some alt text already included in that. All right. So at this point, um, that's sort of lots of the different features I, I think that we're going to go over. I do want to kind of go into all the parts about how to share, what a student view is going to be. There is a ton more to Book Creator. I could keep going probably for another three hours about all the different features that you can do. It's now that you sort of have a basis for using Book Creator, it's about clicking all the buttons and trying the features out yourself. Um, so I do want to talk about copying the work. So first of all, to copy a book, once your students get into the library, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So they've entered into the library. And if this is the book, they will see the teacher's books. 
um, they would click on these books down here and they make a copy of the book. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then it asks you, which library do you want to put it in? So this is what I'm actually going to get everyone who's in this webinar tonight to do at the end is copy my book and put it in your own library. So I could select any of these libraries, but I'm in, it kind of defaults to the one that you're in. So I'm going to click on that one and you're going to see that it labels it copy webinar so the copy at the beginning so right away when a student's copy the book because they'll all be kind of they'll all be called copy webinar you won't be able to know it um you know the different titles i kind of make them right away uh change the title it's being a little glitchy and this may be a google meet thing it's very much flashing. Okay, so I would usually ch change the title. So usually what you could do is click in here and change. Oh, there we go. It was just being flashy, flashy, flashy. Uh, and then change the title. Here we call it Title C Intro by Tara Potter. And you can also change your name down here as well. So that is how you copy a book. And go back to my book. And if you are showing things, I want to show you a little shortcut if you're going to show something from different pages is to click on this pages feature. So this is a really cool thing that you can see the layout of your whole book. And you can see my book kind of keeps going and going and I'm just being mindful of time that we're about halfway and I want to make sure that we, we do everything. So um, now that I'm in here, um, so you can copy the book themselves um, and they need to do that first so they can edit it so they can't go in and edit your book unless you make them a collaborator so that's the next part that I'm going to go over is collaboration and this is a newer feature if you've used book creator a little bit but not in a while this is a new feature it used to be that they could only collaborate everyone the whole class but now book creator has made the ability to combine um, either combine books or work um, in small groups so i'll show you that feature so in here if i wanted students to collaborate sorry on the share button down here i click on collaborate so if i wanted to have a few friends or a few teachers collaborate on this book with me i would click on collaborate and then it brings me to this start. And then I'm gonna say, instead of everyone in the library, I actually just want Catherine to, to edit this book with me. So if I wanted other people, I could select other people, I could select everyone, or you could just choose one person. So you can make small groups of two or three with your students. They need to create the book first and then be able to do this. So keep in mind that and you may want to set up all the books for the students um, in advance or you could get them to do it depending on the level of your students so I'm going to say done and you notice up here you get a little collaborative icon that appears if you wanted so maybe I got feedback from Catherine thank you Catherine she added some stuff but maybe I don't need her to collaborate anymore so I or I don't want the partners to work on it anymore I want them to kind of do their own thing I can change this or I could start stop collaboration. So I'm gonna stop collaboration. So that is in collaboration. Let's just look at a little bit of these menus a little bit more. Uh, I can also, so we showed copy book. We can also move a book without copying it into a different library. So if I say move to library, I can choose my different libraries that I've created to move my book into. That is really good if a student and this has happened numerous times, if they've done Book Creator with other teachers, they will automatically be entered in the last library that they were using Book Creator in, and they just start creating the book, and they're not in your library. So that is a good one for um, if they start and they create their book, and they don't, they don't know how to move the book around, so that's a good feature there for your students. Um, you can actually combine books as well, which is another good feature. So the way I see this using it is if you use this to gather student thinking about 
maybe one topic and they each did maybe just one or two pages and it makes it easier for you to look at. So as long as they had labeled their uh, page in some way with their name on it, um, you could copy and put all the books into one. So maybe I wanna see these students' books together and just look at their work. So I've selected these two and I'm gonna say next, I've combined these books and give it a title. So I'm gonna just call it 17 and 18. They are my student books and I'm gonna create a book. And you notice that it combines the books but the other individual books are still there. So if you did want to um, look at the individual work or you weren't quite sure if they didn't label it properly, you could go back and look at the individual. But for me, I could see this being a sort of a quick way to mark a whole bunch of things without going through each separate book. Um, this down here at the bottom, this share icon. Uh, so we talked about collaborate. This is a good way for students to be able to kind of keep their book forever is this publish online. I recommend this feature and uh, over an, an ebook, my personal self, because it downloads it as an EPUB file when you download it as an ebook. EPUB files I find a little trickier. You can still read them, no problem. However, I find this a little easier to use. So once you publish this book, I'm going to just click on publish. You can, this little pop up appears and you can copy the link and that would be something that you could share with your students so they can kind of take them at the end of the year or at the end of the term, just so they can save it because um, probably at the end of the year you're probably either going to archive this library or they won't be part of it anymore you can also stop publishing it as well so then you can read it online um, and then play is reading your book so i'm just going to look at that and i'm going to demonstrate a few features here so first of all this is what it will look like in your online link very similar you'll still get these features as well. So I can just flip or I can have it read to me. So I can say read to me and it'll start. So you can't hear it because I'm sharing my entire screen, but it will read to you out loud. I can click here on the settings and instead of side by side pages, I can change this to a single view, which is nice. I actually prefer this view. I can, when it's reading to me, can highlight the words, play the multimedia. So this would be for videos and audios, that sort of thing. And this turn pages automatically as you're going through it. So when it's done the page, it'll flip it for you. If you don't like that or any of these features, you can toggle them on and off. And this is about the read to me feature. So you can toggle that a little faster. It kind of defaults to the middle. And I think that sounds okay. So I'm going to do that. So some settings, and then this just makes it full screen mode. Okay, I do wanna show a student view. So I'm gonna flip over to my one of my students accounts. And I'm going to go to student portal. I'll take a sip of water while that's loading up and I click in book creator. And you notice because I was already signed in, it just brings me to my current library. So that's what I was talking about. So this is mine and the teacher's books. I'm not seeing who else is there. I can see the combo book that I've worked on. So now I have editing access to this combo book. I have the teacher book and I have my own book and that's my copy of the teacher book. Um, what, we're, what we can also do is look at a preview of what it would look like to sign in from a student. And I will just, it's gonna bring me there to the student portal. So this student has not joined the library yet. 
I'm going to click on Book Creator. And notice, because I'm from the st student portal, I get this toggled first. That's important. Uh, a couple of friends, I've noticed they've clicked over here and then have become a teacher in some situations. So you want to make sure that this is this is on this side. So if you're demonstrating it for students, make sure you show them this part right here. And I assign it with Google. Select your account. And then it brings me to a library that another teacher has made with me. So this isn't the library that I want. And many students will be in this situation. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is tell them to go to the hamburger and click on join a library. Once they join a library, they will need the code from you. So what I would do as a teacher, I'll just toggle back to my account here, is show the invite code. So you're going to need to have this displayed on the screen, or you could cut and paste that somewhere. Um, notice you would not want to post this anywhere, like on a website or on social media, because then you could have lots of people joining your library. So we don't want that. So just share. Usually in a Google Meet, you could share it on the screen, and then the two students could type it in. And then you're going to need to type in the code. I'll just do that quickly. And I'm going to join in the library. And then it brings me to the library. So what you can see is a combination book. And you can see right here, I've published this one online. And then the teacher books. So I'm going to create uh, a new book and show you what a student would do if they're creating their book for the first time. So maybe you have an empty library and that's kind of what you want it to be. Um, so I'm going to click on new book and sort of go over the different types of books that a student could create. These books up here are plain books and they only have two menus. So that comic book third menu is not available and you cannot put in panels like you can with the comics. It's recommended if you have littles or they're using it for the first time, you may want to start here just because it's less places to click and less places for errors. You still get all the accessibility features, just not these panels and the different types of uh, comic-y writing. If you have slightly older students, and I would say even grade three or even a grade two who have used it once, could handle the comic book and then it's just a little bit more fun with it for them. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So they just have a blank page. So as you flip over, I am adding more blank pages. So there was kind of two to default. And then what you didn't see on my book is this plus. So this is actually how you add a new page right here is adding the plus. When I click on pages, I just see my blank pages. And what I can do is I can actually drag these and move them around. In this menu, I can say uh, copy to. And because I have these two libraries available to me, I can copy that page into a specific book that I've created. So that's really cool. So this is something that I actually do if I had that template page. I could copy that page into a student's book or I could copy feedback and put it into a student's book. So I really like doing that. Um, I could insert, I could move, and I could copy to, and I can also copy a page. So those are some different features once you're in this pages menu. Um, I want to check in with people because we do have some time and I can definitely go over more advanced features, but I'm going to come back to my account and just, I'm going to stop presenting just for a second. And at this point, I think I'm going to check in on the questions and answer some questions. And then I'm going to leave the last 10 minutes for a very slow walkthrough. I'm going to get everyone to go to Book Creator. You're going to copy my book. You're going to create your own library. Um, so let's just answer some questions. Or since we're a smaller group tonight, um, 
if you want to unmute yourself, just know that this is being recorded. So I will press stop record uh, towards the very end. And if someone rather answer or ask an oral question, but not being recorded, that's fine. Okay, can students work and edit on the same book through Book Creator as they do in Google Docs and Slides? So yes, we did go over the collaborative feature and you can collaborate all in the same book. I don't recommend all your entire class collaborating on one book because just like in Google Sl Slides or Jamboard or all these collaborative tools, um, there's a bit of an education piece that needs to be there. I can probably turn on my camera, can't I? Um, that needs to be there first before you start having the whole class because they can delete things by accident. However, you're working with slightly older students or you did have that education piece there, I say go for it. It sounds great, like a great idea. Uh, if you're doing a book as a way to present cards or letters that you received, what is the easiest way to put those letters into a book? Um, so we didn't talk about inserting different types of documents. So I can definitely demonstrate that. And linking things might be another way to show. And I can show that because I didn't show that feature. Um, or you could, if it's something that you're just reading, like a letter, you could just take a picture of it and insert it as a picture. So insert as a picture is another way. And I'll show you kind of like the three different ways that you can, you can do that. Are there any other questions though, before I start demonstrating those things back on Book Creator? And feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to. All right, so I'll go back to my book. I'll present now. All right, so I'll just click into this uh, blank one for now. And about adding different stuff. So what we can do is click on the plus button. Um, and then what are a few things that I didn't tell you, you could add. If you're using the comic, you can actually add panels, which makes it kind of cool and separates it nicely. And then this media. So what you would do is you would click on this import. So you can actually import images from Google, maps, which are also really cool. So um, Sometimes I've asked my students to uh, type in the place that they'd most like to visit in the future. So they could type this in and add a map or maybe where um, their favorite place that they'd like to visit. Uh, and you can add in a map. You can ask, also add in files from your computer. So this is a picture. So that's what I was talking about. If you had the letter saved as an image. So I'll just click on this one and open it. And I can make that smaller. So that's an image just from my computer. And then other media, sorry, on import is you can also select files from your Google Drive. And it will ask you to go through permissions and connect to your Google Drive if you haven't done that. So that does take a couple of steps for a student. So you would need to prompt them to do that. So you could find your letter and insert the drive file there. Um, and then you can also embed code, which is really nice. So if you wanted to embed a YouTube video, and I'll just quickly demonstrate that because it's a useful feature, especially if you're a teacher. Oh, we'll go to, oh, look at this great YouTube channel. Oh, I guess we'll just pick this random one. And then if you find the video that you want to insert, what you're looking for is the embed. So you would click on share and then the embed code. And then you're gonna want to grab the embed code and copy it, go back to your book and press paste and confirm your web link. And then you have it there and then you can add it to the book. So you can see that's how I've added sort of my, my videos and you can drag them and make them a little bit bigger. All right, I think I'm gonna stop re 
record. Actually, maybe I will record this part. I'm going to walk everybody through creating their own library and then I'm going to let you uh, copy my book. So if I recommend you doing this, if you'd like to sign off, that's um, that's fine if you feel like you have a, enough to get started. But I will walk you through signing into Book Creator, creating your own library. I'm going to have you join my library and copy a book. And then um, I, you can make a copy of my book so you can have it. Does that sound good? Thumbs up, are we good? Okay, so if everybody can follow along and I will pause in between each of these steps. So the first step that we are going to do is we are going to click on staff portal. So staff portal, and then we are going to click on the rainbow book. on Book Creator. I will sign out to make sure that I'm in the right spot as you. So here you are, you wanna make sure that it's toggled to teacher and you sign in to Google. We are slow tonight. I think everybody's streaming Netflix. <laughs> when it prompts you, uh, what you would do is pick, choose your account. Here it comes mine. And then if you have, if it brings you to a library, what you're gonna wanna do is click on the hamburger and so you get to this teacher dashboard page. And right here, what you're going to do is you're going to create a new library. If this is something that you're going to use with students, um, you may want to go ahead and give it a practical title. So grade four, Mrs. Potter, um, math journals. And then it prompts you for a bunch of settings. I like to keep this one on, they'll allow Google image search uh, because then it allows your students to put in pictures with Google. Of course, you can toggle it off if you don't think that that's appropriate. Students can edit their own books. So yes, if you toggle this off, everything becomes like a read only feature. So I like to keep the top two on. I like to toggle this one off and the reason why I like to have this one off is that I can toggle it back on later but when students are initially putting their thoughts down they may be a little bit nervous to share and it's always a good idea to ask permission if they want their book shared. Um, students can enable collaboration. I also recommend turning this one off because they can start a collaboration without permission from another student. If you had older students like high school and you wanted to give them the ability to choose their own group members and you didn't want to have to create the groups yourself, that is a faster way to do it. However, lots of mistakes can be made, especially if you're working with younger students. Um, students can publish their books online. That's up to you. You don't have to. And I'm going to actually, I didn't show one feature that I'd like to go over is how to publish your whole library online and you can give that link to parents. So we're going to go ahead and click on create library and you can see it there. So at this point, don't go ahead any further because I'm going to have you come to my library and join my library, copy a book and put it in your library. So a bunch of steps, but I think we can do it. So I'm just going to pause there. And if anyone needs more time or you missed a step and you want me to go over, just unmute yourself and let me know. Otherwise, I'll wait about 10 more seconds and then I'll go ahead. Good. Okay, so what I'm going to get you to do is once you're in my library, um, you're going to click on my book, click on the books, 
you're going to copy my book and you're going to put it in your library. So I don't want you to put it in my library. I want you to put it in your own library. So right now, um, from your page, you're over here. You're going to click join library and you're going to type in this code. So I'm going to let you do that now. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to click on my book here and then you're going to um, click on the books and you're going to copy my book and you're going to put it in your own library. 